assume you'll be going with Nick Saylor for your, yours. Um, Drop my pen. Yeah. Or Chris Cheatham. Those are your choices. Yeah. Or, or Jorgie. Yeah, I'll take – or Jackson, actually. Uh, give me Jackson. Wow. <laughs> wow. Hey, welcome back to Fade the Mahoney. Uh, we're going to do a series recap. Uh, we, everybody, we just watched Wildcats sweep the Gators, and uh, we're joined by my current favorite player in the whole league, Jackson Pearson. Thanks for joining us, Jackson. Of course. It's great to be on, guys. Great to be on. Trevor, tell the people why uh, Jackson's my favorite player in the league currently. Uh, it probably is because you hit a ridiculous – I don't even know that things that had to happen in order for you to hit the over in the Wildcats – Gators series it was oh god I was Andrew and I were watching my eight-year-old son Andrew and I were watching it together and he I, as soon as the they scored the run to tie it I was like okay no big deal because it's probably gonna end two to one in which case the under still is good and then of course Jackson comes up hits the three-run homer obviously a great hit I I picked Jackson in the slate too which shows kind of conflicting for me um but yeah that was that was a little bit of good good run good for you there Run good for me. Uh, gambling recap real quickly. Uh, the little birdie who set the line did a pretty good job. Probably should have been a little bit higher. Wildcats were definitely the big favorites. We didn't have any action on that. 17 and a half was very good uh, over underlying set. I bet the over that worked out for me. And then our heads up ladder. Um, I had the commissioner and you took this guy, Jackson. How cool was it to hear that you were getting the start in our head to head fantasy matchup it was awesome um i watch all your guys' stuff and you guys are uploading consistently so i want to give props to you guys and um yeah i, I want to give a shout out to trevor for picking me mm -hmm. i was hoping that you get to pitch a game i, I didn't know what would happen i, I like the way you threw the ball before and I, you know i i wasn't sure what was going to happen in the series with uh you know what was going to end up happening pitching i figured Taylor would pitch but who knows you never know yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm always practicing out in my backyard and stuff, so I'm ready to go whenever Kyle needs me, but I got two great pitchers ahead of me, so it's hard, man. It's hard. Trevor was counting on you guys losing the first game or so, and then uh, uh, maybe the lineup would have changed. The pitching rotation would have changed, but um, yeah. you guys wouldn't lose. No. Nope. It was a great team effort all around. I loved it. I, I don't know if you already have it queued up there, Mike, but uh... – I think the clip at the start of this episode has to be me talking about, remember when you said, uh, if, if I had to pick somebody, I think we were at, at the end of slate too. If I had to pick somebody long odds to make the world series or to win the world series. And I, I said, wildcats. And you said, wait, wait, were you going to say wildcats? And I said, wildcats. Cause you know, I like, I think they're going to put it together. You know, they have the, the tools and it was kind of, they got off to a slow start. Um, but yeah, talk. I guess Jackson, talk a little bit about that. You know, the slow start, and then what's what's gone differently for you guys over the last couple of series. Yeah, so uh, with the slow start, I mean, obviously we came out and we beat the D-backs right away. We great team effort all around there. Everybody was hitting, and then we moved on to that Pred series, and we split those first two games. And the game in Toledo could have gone either way. It was one swing of the bat. You have to give props to Brennan. It was um, just little hanging riser there by Kyle it's I mean it was so that game could have gone whatever it was a great series all around and then we moved on and um the next series we played the Cobras and the same it was the same thing in that uh series too because we it was one to one going into game three and I don't know if you guys remember but we had first and second and I came up and I hit um Baranowski drop ball down it was a it was like in between third base and the pitcher's mound and he went out snagged it and barely got Kyle by half step at third. And the little plays, I always say this in baseball, and I say it in wiffle ball too, the little plays make the difference in the big games. And that's why we haven't been able to win the World Series the past two years is because we've been messing up on those little plays. And that was one there that you have to give props to the other team. Nothing we could have done, and it was just a great play by Barron. But um, then we moved on, and the next series we got it done, and I just – our whole team is clicking at the right time going into the second half. Everybody's hitting, and um, obviously just – Sailors on another level once again this year. Some people didn't know if he was going to be able to pitch, and it's contributed. And along with Kyle, it's he's he's really picking it up in the second half, and I I love to see it. I can't wait to see what we can do. Uh, talking about that play that Barron made, 
you guys must have saved three or four runs this past series. The defense was incredible. It's just incredible. That, that's another thing is, um, so for our defense, we've totally switched up our positioning too. So if you guys remember the last play of the World Series um, last year when Shima hit the walk-off down the first baseline, if you guys watch the replay on that, I'm more towards second base because that was our our uh, defensive format and our defensive style. So we, we could get more force outs at seconds, fielder's choice, that type of thing. Now we have me positioned to where I'm almost playing first base in right field. So I can, I'm, I'm covering about every single play unless the pitcher is charging that way and he wants it, then I can back off. But our communication has been so much better this year that way. We love that format and um, that's the way that we've been rolling. And I think that's why we've had so much success in the second half. Yeah, I mean, you saw it last year with the D-backs. They they were the best best defensive player, uh, best defensive team in the league last year, and they saved uh-huh. so many runs. And you guys have done it time and time again. I mean, the top ten of defensive plays are going to be a bunch of Wildcats, but a bunch of Kyle plays basically. Because, yeah, I mean, the plays that he's made, uh, that one play to cut the runoff at home. I mean, that was such a huge play in the game. And I mean, shout out to uh, to Jorgie, who who I thought had a pretty good series, uh, probably yeah. his best series of the season, probably the best series that that Mike has ever seen him play. Uh, it's, so, in, it's in my notes actually yeah it's, okay, I figured it would be I mean he, play, he played well and uh it seemed like the Gators really struggled with getting that timely hit when they needed it they had many opportunities and I mean that's what it comes down to with football a lot of times is is you know that coming through in that in the clutch with that big hit when when you have those opportunities um and you guys did the opposite you know you guys came up with the big hits when you had the opportunity yeah, hundred percent. It's just like you have to think about it. When we go to the field for MLW, it's a three inning wiffle ball game, so it's just all those little plays, timely hits, and it's where when you have a three or four man lineup, really, in the end of the day, everybody has to contribute, and that's where your two arm comes in, the whole lineup comes in. It's just little things, little things. Such a huge advantage to have three really good players and just play three. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Hey, like when you look at the Wildcats lineup, like who are you going to pitch to? There's no, you can't, there's nowhere to hide. There's no, there's no easy out there. So that's a big, you know, that's a big thing. And it, you know, you see a lot too, if that, that number two, you guys have obviously Sailor as your, as your, you know, your second best hitter, probably and not, no, dis, no disrespect to your game at all, Jackson. Uh, obviously you got two great, you know, world-class hitters in front of you. And, and then the fact that you're the third hitter on the team, which would probably be the second best hitter on most teams uh, is obviously there's just nowhere to go. Yeah, that's what um, – in the end of the World Series last year, I had a pretty good rookie season. Like, I came out and played really well right away, and then I struggled versus the Preds a little bit and moved on to the World Series, had a couple big hits here and there, but it was a little uh, rocky. But So I really worked this whole off season. And if you go to my Instagram, uh, I wrote down on my last slide of one of my posts a bunch of goals that I had going into the season. I've hit most of them, and um, – it's just like, I, yeah, I really wanted to improve so we could have like a three-headed monster um, for our, throughout our whole lineup. And I, I can pitch. I practice in my backyard all the time. I got the MLW set up. And, um, yeah, I, I'm dedicated. So I want, I want to be the best player I can be, and I want, to be, I, want to be the, I want to have the best team that we can be in the future. Tell you what, the Wildcats' odds are, are shrinking. Uh, like for the World Series, they're, they're favorites in my book right now, just listening to this. I, I, I like the way this is sounding. I was going to ask, as far as the gambling goes, to put you on the spot right now. What are their odds right now just to be the one seed? It's the, they've got to be a favorite, right? Uh, so they are. Uh, Cobras would need to sweep. Cobras, no, Cobras have the tiebreaker against them, right? They just have to win two. Uh, are the Preds need to sweep? Isn't one of them three games back, or do I have it completely? Bothered? No, they're both. They're both two games back. Oh, okay. I believe, and then and Cobras. They both have the um, tiebreaker over the Wildcats. So, depending on who, Cobras control their own destiny. Cobras win two, they they win the American League. Okay, so what are the odds that the Wildcats are going to be the one seed? Okay, so Cobras, Diamondbacks. No, we know Drew wasn't there. Uh, so, God, I don't know. You put me on the spot here. I I don't I don't think they're that great, honestly, because I think one of the Cobras or Preds will win two out of three. So it's probably not that great. I think they're going to end up playing in, in the in the the two versus three, the ALCS. I, neither of those two teams are playing against the Magic in their last game in their that last is, series, right? That's true. That is true. So it's not a walk. 
All right, I've got a bevy of real quick hitter questions I want to ask you real quick, uh, Jackson. Are you ready? Sounds good, yeah. One, do you have a jersey on the merch store? I don't. Hopefully I can get one soon if I keep performing well, though. Okay, okay. Two, what's the R on your hat? Oh, that's my travel baseball team. It stands for uh, Red Seam Raiders. Okay. I was wondering that, too. That's a good question, Mike. Yeah, it's my go-to hat whenever I'm playing. Nice. I always think it, uh, whenever I see it, I think it's Rutgers, but that's just because you've polluted my brain, Trevor. Yeah. I'm a Rutgers alum, so that's why he's, that's not the, that's not the uh, Rutgers R, though. I know the Rutgers R. Um, my last thing, uh, well, it's not my last thing, but my next thing, uh, why don't you talk a little bit about your YouTube channel, get it out there, uh, let people know. Yeah, no, so um, I'm trying to post once a week right now. I'm trying to post every Saturday. And um, my ultimate goal is I want to just get my channel as big as possible. And I just, uh, I do MLW related videos. I do vlogs, I do pranks. And um, I'm about to, I'm approaching a thousand subscribers right now. And um, yeah, I just make videos with my friends, with my buddies. I uh, actually filmed the whole um, video when we were in Illinois a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's a fun time and I'm trying to stay consistent. I want to get as big as possible. And I want, eventually I want, I'm, I film everything on my phone too. I've actually told people that I want to film on my phone until I, I hit like a thousand, just to show people that if you did start a YouTube channel that you can start on your phone and you don't need a camera and uh, big equipment that's like super expensive to start because you really can, you, all you need is a phone. Gotcha. Um. I watched, I've watched a few of yours now, including the one you just posted, which was basically oh, your sizzle okay. reel for this season, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's really, really cool. The one criticism I have is like half of it was stuff against the magic. <laughs> That's just not really all that fair. <laughs> I, I, yeah, it was, it was a, uh, it was a big series I had, so I had to add it in there. <laughs> wait, wait, Mike is the biggest magic hater. He's no. he, he's been on the magic hate train since since before it was cool. No, I, lo <laughs> I love some of those guys. Um, uh, and I guess a shout shout out to Chadwick. Uh, he got eliminated twice by you guys. Is that what I read correctly? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I, I love I love Chadwick. He's a great guy and a great player. I can't uh, wait to see what the future holds with him and the Gators. He's a great friend of the show. I think he performed yeah. admirably, admirably. It's so funny, though, because uh, every time he came up the bat, it felt like he had an opportunity to win the game. And I'd yes. say to Andrew, I, I'd say, Chadwick's up. He has a chance to win the game right now. First first time with the Gators, and then he'd strike out. <laughs> Storybook ending, get traded and win the game, and he never did it. Uh, yeah, my, my next note on here was what you said. A shout-out to Jorgie. Uh, I've only been watching for a little over a year. Without a doubt, his best series. He was great. Yeah, he played. He played great. He looked like what they need moving forward. If 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 he can play like that next season, then I will not put their win total so low. I've I've said this like multiple times, and also uh, Jimmy Norp said this before too. I I don't know how. Like I could easily see Jorgie hitting three hundred and having a really good. Uh, that like a consistent pitching performance like he's he has the stuff to be a great pitcher in the league and honestly like Jorgie has some really good hand-eye coordination so I, I I see him with a bright future his stuff looked really good from what we could see yeah. on YouTube yeah. and it was the first series I've ever seen him hit the ball really well I mean he was a threat every time he got up so yep. that was cool I hope we're going to see some more of him. He still needs to come back to refute the uh, Sawyer BN slander that he got. So That's right. We'll have him back on. I got a question for you, Jackson. Uh, so how, how does your wiffle ball swing compare to your baseball swing? Because you have a very, like a very violent swing, you know, and that, that your back foot kind of slides out a lot when, it, when you swing. Uh, is, that, is that similar to your baseball swing or is it different? Uh, yeah, honestly, uh, with the back foot sliding, most of the time it's just because, like, if – sometimes in BP I'll try to inside out the ball to start just to stay on it and um if you watch this year in the videos actually one of my goals was to keep my back foot more planted and stuff so I don't do it as much anymore but you could see it a lot last year like if you go to the videos you'll definitely uh recognize it right away but yeah most of the time it's just because I'm staying on the ball inside and out and it's right center and then once I get in the game I try not to do it as much but it's a tendency so you'll you'll see it once in a while but uh compared my baseball swing it's um I would say it's pretty similar like I go up there hacking, and then when I get two strikes, 
I widen now. You'll see it like I did it um, against the Magic. Like so, like you'll see on uh, the bottom slider that I hit up the middle towards the wall. I was like widened out a lot. So I I come in to MLW with the same approach and everything, especially because MLW is so hand eye coordination uh, like based. Like you have to you have to be fast to the ball. You have to be short to the ball. So it's just those type of things. So, um, but that's, that's what I am in baseball. I'm, I don't hit for a ton of power. I hit like a lot of doubles. I'm not a big home run guy, just singles, doubles. I'm getting on base. I have really good hand-eye coordination. I don't swing and miss too much. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. I, I would say like, I haven't, I've never seen like an actual heat map of your, of your zone, but it seems like if I was pitching against you, I would just keep everything away from you. Cause it seems like anything that's up and in you just destroy it seems like it ends over the left field fence if you, if, they, if they get it up and in. If outside, you know, that's where I would pitch it. I, I don't know. It seems like they, they haven't got the memo on that one yet. Yeah, it's uh, – and then it's hard, too, because a lot of the times, like when you're watching the MLW games, you can't see the full at-bat. Right, so, right. like, when I was facing Barron, I had that whole 10 pitch at-bat, and he was actually throwing me away a lot, and then he just missed the slider inside. So I, I just got my hands into it. And it was the same thing with Cheatham. Cheatham was throwing me a lot uh, outer half that hole at bat, and then he literally just missed a slider inside, and I got it over the fence. But yeah, I would like my swing. I mean, I'm geared for like a left center type swing, but if the ball is outside, I'll stay on it, and I'll go. I'll go to right center. Like you see, uh, I did it against uh, one of Barron's drops in the Cobra series, and uh, you'll see it a lot in the Bay City Wiffle Ball series too. If you guys are familiar with Trey's league, okay, cool. Yeah, uh, it's important uh, because we are a gambling show. And we want to be accurate. Trevor, both the Predators and the Wildcats were seven and five heading into slate five. Okay. Oh, they were both seven and five. Okay. So in order for the Wildcats not to be the one seed, either the Predators have to sweep the Eagles. Okay. Odds on that, not good. Right. Cobras have to win at least two against the Jimmy Norp resurgent. Right. Head. Okay. So not that not that long odds. I don't I I I'll tell you what, I've played way too many hours of poker today yeah. and uh, and coached baseball that to actually think on the fly here on on to give a good odds total for you. I, they're actually minus 110. They're favorites. You think they're favorites? Yeah, I just did the math. They're okay, favorites. nice. All right, fair. I trust you. Okay. Um, any other questions for our special guest and my current favorite player in the league, uh, Jackson Pearson? Uh what what would you say is maybe your highlight so far in the league? Was it? I mean, the the for me watching it, the uh, the tornado siren home run was one of my favorite games to watch back and 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 see through. I actually had Mike go back and watch that game because when you guys played the Cobras this year, I said you guys got you got to go back and watch the series from last year because it was it was amazing. Yeah, I would actually say that is probably my favorite series I've ever played in MLW. And then, I mean, obviously you had the World Series from last year, and that was just that was just a battle. Uh, it was a dogfight. Every everybody was locked in. I've never seen like a series like that where everybody was that into the game, that locked in, and that was just awesome. But my favorite series myself that I've ever played had to be that Cobra series. But uh, and then just like I was going back to the World Series too, probably my favorite memory I would say is just getting there with Nick and Kyle because. They're, they're my guys and that's what we grind for all season. So when we made, made it to the world series, my rookie season, it was, it was great experience. That world series, again, I haven't been watching very long. That was incredibly high level, super entertaining. So awesome. And I predict we'll pl be played again. This oh, year. that's my, prediction. you think it's going to be a rematch, Mike? I do. I mean, that's what I had at the beginning of the season as the odds, obviously, but mm -hmm. you know, we'll see what happens. Ride the hot hand. Um, any other questions, Trevor? No, I think that's all I got. We've got uh, D backs and Cobras coming up this week. That is, that's the one that they play in the uh, mini Major League Baseball stadiums. That's yep, correct. in Vermont. Yep, in Vermont. Uh, were you there for that, Jackson? I was not there. No, but I do know that it was a great series. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Obviously, uh, we'll be back on Thursday. Uh, to do some gambling on that along with uh, some NFL picks. Um, either of you, is there anything I've forgotten that we need to talk about before we sign off? I know Trevor's got another show he's got to record today. Probably hasn't eaten dinner yet. <laughs> I do. Well, you have to shout me out for that. Play. Did you see the play on Instagram that I made yesterday? Yeah, I replied I and everything. 
What what did you say, Jackson? I did. I saw uh, Trevor's play that he made. That was awesome. Uh, so he was actually oh. safe. I, I have. I, I'm going to post again. Uh, I have an up close view, and the first baseman's foot is off the bag. The Nobody ball in there. Nobody. But we that. we do have, and the rolling on the field was safe, so mm. I didn't overturn it. But we do have a clause where, because we're playing with little kids, that you don't have to be necessarily right on the base, but you have to be in the vicinity of the base because you don't want to step on the hands. Yeah. So, so I don't know. I thought he was out in real time. They called him safe. I was upset. And then that team actually won nine to eight. So. Oh, wow. The, it was pretty far away. Was that Andrew? Uh, no, that was one of, um, one of my coach pitch kids, uh, Wyatt. His name is, he's five years old. He's, he's, he hits bombs. He's, he's good. Wyatt's got a little bottom in him. Doesn't want to run right away when he hits the ball. He wants to stare at it. <laughs> Did you see he got to the base though? And he was given the, yeah, yeah. he said he was safe. All right. Uh, check out Trevor's Instagram. So you guys can know what we've been rambling about for the past two minutes. Uh, I think the kid was out, but I guess my vote doesn't count. Jackson, this was fantastic. You are welcome to come back on anytime you want. Sweet uh, guys. That was good information. And, uh, We'll be back on Thursday with the preview show, D-backs, Cobras. I'm working on having a player help us preview. We'll see, we'll see what I can have uh, happen. But uh, until we Shima? see Can we get Shima on? Oh, lots of shout-outs to Shima today. Uh, Jackson Defense gave him a shout-out mentioning his last hit in the uh, league, which was in the uh, World Series last year. So that was nice of you, Jackson. <laughs> you guys are crazy, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good gambling, everybody. We'll see you Thursday. All right. I got to run. See you guys. Thanks, Jackson.